Hello everyone and welcome to another video from EGIS Associates. Today we're going to be talking about ArcGIS Online and a new update that is coming in December. Specifically, we're going to focus on new user types that are going to be added as part of this update. So for those that may not know what ArcGIS Online is, it's Esri's cloud-based service that allows you to share maps, data, applications, files, and a whole lot more to those both within and outside of your organization. So it really allows you to increase access and use of your, of your GIS. Uh, it's also very heavily integrated with uh, ArcGIS Pro, Esri's newest desktop GIS application, as well as integrated into the traditional ArcMap, Arc Catalog that we've been using for close to 20 years now. It also allows you to take services uh, and integrate those into web apps. It actually has tools to create your own web applications that don't really require you to be uh, a programmer, uh, like Web App Builder. So that's really cool, uh, as well as being integrated with a bunch of Esri's mobile applications that they have, such as Collector, Survey123, in addition to their dashboards and, and other applications that uh, Esri's built. And you access ArcGIS online by going to www.arcgis.com. And from there, you log in, and depending on your uh, permissions and roles and, and whatnot, uh, that will control the the level that you can interact with the solution that Esri has provided for us. So it's a very powerful tool in our arsenal, and uh, hopefully you are uh, making use of this. But what we really want to focus on is this new update. So on December 4th of this year, 2018, Esri is going to push a change or an update to the AGOL platform. Everybody that has an AGOL sub subscription is going to get this update because it's a cloud solution you don't get to choose when and if you update um, it it's just something that that happens it's part of the way the cloud works it's the same with you know office 365 and and uh, so on so that's going to happen on december 4th and this update's going to include some new functionality some changes to to workflows such, such as how you add a a new user in there, uh, some updates to the interface, and then what we're going to be talking about uh, today is these new user types. So currently in ArcGIS Online, there are two user types. You have a level one and a level two user. So a level one user is basically a viewer. It's somebody that can come in and view content that's been shared through your organization. So maps, applications, files, they're able to, to view all of those uh, things. What they can't do is they can't go out and use, say, Collector to collect new data or edit existing data. They're not going to be able to use a web application to make changes to information. Uh, they're not going to be able to manage your AGOL subscription. Um, you can't assign a level one user an ARC Pro license uh, using the named user model for licensing in that. So it's a very limited capability that a level one user has. And, and you think of those kind of as just a straight viewer, right? So the level two is a creator. So they have a lot of uh, capability. They can manage your AGO subscription, meaning they can add new users, assign licenses, configure uh, your portal, all kinds of things. They have the ability to create new content so they can create new maps, upload new files, generate new apps uh, with Web App Builder, and so on. Uh, they can, of course, be assigned an ARC Pro license. So Esri's newest desktop application, you can assign them a license to, to use that. Uh, they can edit and collect data. So whether it's through a web app or collector or survey one, two, three, uh, any of those type of applications, they have that capability to, to do that. They can also use uh, some of the ArcGIS online tools to perform analysis. So do buffers, unions, intersects, those kind of things that can be built into your uh, web applications that you create in ArcGIS online, or even into uh, ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Desktop, 
with some of the ready to use tools, uh, such as the, there's some routing tools or create service areas and those kind of things. So there's really a lot that a creator can do or has the potential to do, depending on the roles that they've been assigned and other permissions that have been configured for them. So you have a lot more capability potentially than a level uh, one user. So going forward with the update that's coming in December, what Esri is going to do is add several new user types. So we're going from two user types to five. And what this is going to do is provide more flexibility to your organization and the capabilities uh, of those users, right? So you saw all the things that a creator could do versus all the things that a level one user, the viewer could do. And you'll notice here that those two roles are still there. There's still a viewer, there's still a creator, and that's basically uh, the same. But they're adding an editor, a field worker, and a GIS professional to the mix. So what's going to be the differences between these users? Well, here you can see a kind of a comparison chart of uh, the capabilities of these different user types. So your viewer, which is the same as your old level one, is going to be able to view that organizational content. So those maps that are created, files that are, are published, uh, any of the uh, open data that's shared through uh, the Living Atlas or Esri's base maps, those kind of things, they're gonna have uh, full access to just like they do now. They're also gonna be able to use the essential apps. And we'll talk about what essential apps are in just a second. Your editor, that's one of the new user types. So they're going to be able to do all the things that a viewer does. Plus, they're going to be granted the capability of editing data, right? So they'll be able to use web apps to make updates to information, to redline, and those kind of things. The next one up is the field worker. So this is another new type. And it expands on what the editor is allowed to do by granting them access to the field apps. And again, we'll talk more about what field apps are in just a second. So, but yes, the, the name would imply really designed to be for those out in the field doing inspections, data collection, uh, and those kind of activities. The creator is the equivalent of the old uh, level two. So it's got all the capabilities of the other three. Plus you can use the office apps for ArcGIS. And again, we'll mention those in a second. Uh, a creator can also create new maps, new apps, upload new files, uh, and those kind of things. So really creating content in your ArcGIS Online subscription. They also potentially have the capability of administering the, the subscription. You can assign a creator the admin role. So that means that they can add new users, assign licenses, uh, and so on. And the last is the GIS Professional there. And of course, it, it has all the capabilities of all the other three with the additional capability of being uh, allowed to be assigned an ArcGIS Pro license. So that new desktop application, ArcGIS Pro, uh, you can assign a somebody that is a, a GIS professional user level, a license, so that they can use that on their desktop, do analysis and do things in, in that traditional desktop environment. So I mentioned several app bundles that, that the user types would, would have, and this is another new thing that's coming out as part of this update. So what are these? So the ArcGIS Essential apps, so this is going to be things like your, your story maps, for which is a web type application there. Any custom apps that are created with Web App Builder uh, that are shared out to users, uh, those will be accessible under the Essential Apps. Uh, the Esri Operational Dashboards, if you deploy one of those, uh, anybody that has access to these Essential Apps will be able to view those. Uh, they'll also be able to use the AGOL uh, map viewer application and scene viewer application. So they can open any maps or scenes that are shared with them in uh, those two apps uh, as well. Again, from a viewer perspective, right? They're not going to be able to do any edits. They're not going to be able to do analysis or any of those kind of things from there. They'll be able to perform basic queries and searches, that kind of thing, but no buffers or any of that kind of thing. The field apps is a collection of applications that Esri's deployed for the mobile environment, such as Collector, Survey123, and Workforce for ArcGIS. So these are all free apps, meaning you can download them for free and install them on your various mobile devices. Uh, they're supported in iOS as well as Android. 
and then you can use them. So collector allows you to go out and collect, you know, data. It just as the name implied. Surveys one through one, two, three is more of a forms based uh, application so that maybe the, the features already been collected and you're just doing an inspection on it, that kind of thing. So uh, any of those tools will be available uh, under the field apps, right? And then Office apps are plugins for Microsoft Office products that allow you to access ArcGIS maps into those. So you have ArcGIS maps for Office that allows you to bring in like Excel data and things of that nature and generate a map inside of, of, of those. Uh, ArcGIS Maps for SharePoint is a plug-in for SharePoint, Microsoft SharePoint, uh, kind of a group sharing uh, collaboration tool that allows you to access ArcGIS functionality in those, uh, in that environment, I should say. So again, that's what kind of makes up those three categories of essential apps versus field apps versus office apps and who will have access to those. Uh, if you want to, to read more about some of these new user types and what's coming in the new release of ArcGIS Online in December, here are some web addresses that uh, will provide you with some more information about that. I'll include these also in the, the uh, description of the video down below so that you can get to those uh, fairly easily. But there's a lot of good information and encourage you to go check those out. So with that, that's pretty much it about the new user types uh, in a nutshell. We don't know about pricing yet. So um, as soon as I find those things out, I'm sure we'll produce some sort of video or uh, include that information in a newsletter that we send out. I only, uh, I can only assume that the pricing will you know, co coincide with the capabilities of the license level. Currently a level one user license costs $100 per year and a level two user license is $500 per year. So I imagine that the in-between user licenses under the new update would cost somewhere in between that. Um, and maybe the GIS Pro would cost something more than that. But again, I'm not entirely sure. We have not seen any pricing models for the new user levels coming out yet but just keep that in mind well i hope you've learned a lot uh, or at least picked up some good tidbits out of this video remember if you need any help with your gis whether it's enterprise implementation integrating with other solutions application development strategic planning needs assessment health checks uh, rent -a tech type services training or support uh, feel free to reach out to us we'll be happy to give you a hand Here's our contact information. So you can reach our website at www.egisassociates.com. Give us a call at 678-710-9710 or email us at info at egisassociates.com. So with that, we'll wrap it up. For all of our viewers here in the United States, we wish you a happy Thanksgiving coming up very soon. And for all others, hope you have a great and wonderful rest of your week. And we'll talk to you later.